And I'm Nuffle. We are both Anderson Secondary School students from Singapore and 15 years old, competing as Team Imagine Winning in RCEP 2021, Aichi Japan. We have participated in our country's NNY and a few other co space competitions. Co space Rescue Challenge is a competition where robots compete to get the highest score on a map filled with obstacles, traps, and colored gems. Our main tasks are to collect the colored gems and deposit all of them while avoiding traps and obstacles. For our preliminary round, we were given this map and there are some things we should take note of, such as the abundance of gems spread almost evenly throughout the map. Even though this layout means even naive wandering strategies would work, well, we couldn't settle for that, so we implemented two conceptually simple strategies, zoning and pathfinding. Zoning is just creating a few areas around the map that have higher concentrations of a gem colour, so when the robot needs any colour, it knows to head there to search for it. We also added an anchor point for every zone for the robot to pathfind to, represented as an X on the picture. The robot needs to decide if it should travel to a zone and which zone it should travel to. So we created a formula to decide which zone is best, based on how close it is and if it has the gems we need. Lower values are better. If the value is too high, it will ignore the zones and wander instead. This helps the robot to understand where it should go next. Now on to pathfinding. Pathfinding is the foundation for nearly everything new we added to the program for this competition. It helps the robot to find a direct path to almost any goal it may have, like the nearest deposit area, the best zone, and a generator super object. As such, it is a massive time saver as compared to simply wandering the map aimlessly. However, this was also very difficult to implement, which we will cover next. For a robot to be able to pathfind, it must see the map similarly to how we do. It may sound simple, but it's actually quite a big problem, as a robot has no built-in way of doing such a thing. The first part of our solution was to simplify the map significantly. We redrew the map using only the basic colours in Microsoft Paint for colour consistency to make it much easier for the robot to see. In the end, we only made use of 7 colours. This was then put through a simple Python script we created that passed the colors into numbers, telling it which kind of object it was based on the RGB values of the pixels, and formatted it into a C-style array that we could copy and paste into our code for the pathfinding algorithm to use. As you can see, the program outputs a gigantic mess of numbers that we can't easily read, or the computer can easily. The pathfinding algorithm itself was the part that took the most time to make, even though we used a comparatively simple pathfinding algorithm. We used a simple case of Jigstra's algorithm, where every distance between two neighbouring nodes was 1, and this generated a path going from the start node to the end node for the robot to reach its goal. This is our general strategy for the whole program expressed in a full chart. Although it is quite simple, each of the processes took quite a long time to make and tune. Debugging was not needed most of the time, excluding the pathfinding algorithm with which, which took a lot of time to debug. One example of this is the collision of robots with obstacles when pathfinding as the robot was not a dot, but had size. This meant the robot would collide with obstacles near the optimal path, which would not do. To solve the issue, we needed to consider what parts of the entire program affected that behaviour and narrowed it down from there. For this case, we realized that there was not much we could do on the code itself, but rather by increasing the size of the obstacles on the simplified map. This means the robot rejected paths too close to obstacles, which fixed the issue. In the end, we managed to get 1,600, 1,630 points, which we felt was okay, but not great as the map was relatively easy, meaning we should have scored higher than normal. We averaged around 1,450 points on successful runs, and the consistency of our runs have improved significantly compared to where we participated in the RCAP Tianjin Invitational. If we were to do it all again, I think we could still improve further on the pathfinding. It was shortly done, and affected our consistency quite badly. We've learned a lot of things through this journey, and starting with the technical details, we learned a lot about how important it is for code to be readable. With our code spanning over 1,500 lines, it was really important for it to remain readable, for debugging or further modification. 
We also learned to make use of structures to create custom types which help with readability as well, such as having a color type instead of three separate integers for red, green, and blue. Lastly, we learned to integrate different languages into our projects based on each language's strengths as we incorporated Python, an interpreted language to help with map parsing. We also learned what it really means to persevere, as during the preliminary round, although we were done with the program, we went the extra mile to run the program for a long time just to get the best results. Not only that, we spent countless of nights typing away on our computers, discussing and planning for what's to come. And from it, we've learned to become better friends and even better teammates. And with that, we have come to the end of our presentation. Thank, Thank you, you for, for your kind attention! Kind attention.